Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. Now if you are a viewer that watches all my videos, video number 295, I talk about this turnbuckle for compressing the spring on your shift handle. And I have a viewer that uh, we talk a lot through emails. I know he's watching every video and I know he's going to be watching this one. He came up with a different design than this. This is a little bunglesome because you have to clamp that 2x6 in there. You got to drill a dimple in it to capture the end of this turnbuckle so it doesn't move around. He come up with a different design and I thought it was such an awesome idea, I built one. And this is the first one I built. Yeah, I built more than one. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> this one is welded together and this is his design. This is from Rodney in Ireland. Hey Rod. And this one's welded together. You I put a nut on the end and I welded it shut and I welded this larger nut, I think they're called a coupling nut, onto a piece of angle iron and we painted it up real pretty. But we're not going to use this one because I don't want to scratch the paint. Now on the end of this, if you do not have a grease fitting on the end of your shift mechanism, you want to drill a small hole for this point to go into. Otherwise, it's just going to walk around as you turn this and it's going to slip out of place. Now, if you have a grease fitting in there, I've got another one of these nuts and you screw it on the end of the rod. And in the end of that, I have a large set screw. And that is in there because if you place this on your machine and you have this on here, you've got pressure on here from the spring and you're turning this. This is not going to turn. You're just screwing the rod into the nut. So the reason for the set screw in there is so that threaded rod will bottom out. And the end of the set screw is drilled out so it'll fit over the grease fitting without damaging it. Now this is for the people that have a welder. We're going to take this off. If you don't have a welder, Rodney's got you covered on that. This is just a piece of one inch by one inch by eight inch thick angle iron, six inches long. The other one is basically the same. One inch by one inch by eight inch angle iron, six inches long. But we have a hole drilled in it. And the nut on the back is what's gonna get pressure between the angle iron and the spring. But you're gonna have to hold that with a wrench while you turn this. This end has two nuts jammed together no welding, it'll work just like the other one. Now, I made, <laughs> you know me, <laughs> I made a third one. This one's for me. I just got done welding this tonight. I welded the nut on, I welded this nut on, and of course I didn't paint it because, well, I don't need it to be pretty, I need it to be functional. These are all painted up and I'm not going to use them because I don't want to scratch the paint all up with the C-clamp. You'll need a C-clamp. Because thank you to Rodney, we're going to give them away in a drawing. Now let me drop the camera down and spin you around and I'll show you how this little jewel works. I guess, oh, I can use a crescent wrench. I was going to say I better grab a three-quarter inch wrench, but that's laying there. So, 
Here's my C clamp. This is a heavy duty welding one. It's what I use on my welder. So let's move you over here and try not to make you seasick. We'll drop this down a little bit and hopefully you can see what's going on. Now I already have a hole drilled in here because I use this machine to demo the turnbuckle. So you just want to put that point in there and back this up until it lines up. This kind of takes two hands. They all do. Or I should say three hands. And throw the seat clamp on that. It'd been nice if I would have had that adjusted a little closer to the size I needed. And we're going to turn this. Now, let me spin you around on the other side of the machine. Hang on. And maybe you'll be able to see this move. Now, you can use a ratchet on here or an impact or anything you want to make it work a little faster. But we're already loose. We could pop the pin out and disassemble this thing and clean it and grease it and put it back together. That's loose already. That's how simple this one works. I'm going to give this one away first, the one that's welded. And you'll get this that goes on the end just in case your machine has a grease fitting or if you put a grease fitting in your machine like I did in one of the videos so I can keep it greased I put a grease fitting in my 2012 these two are for sale and uh, we'll be giving this away a little later the one that's um, you can use without it being bolted together <clears throat> or welded together I'm looking at the bolt. To make this one work, you put it on the same way you did that one. <clears throat> you hold this nut with a wrench and you twist this and it will compress that spring. <clears throat> Rodney, awesome idea. I don't know how you come up with some of these. It, he's had a lot of brainstorms that he's told me about that he has done in his own uh, shop. I'm trying to back this off. I don't really know why. I don't have to take it out. That's mine. Like I said, Rodney, awesome idea. Now, if you want to register to win this, I don't even know what the date is right now. Today's the 15th. Should have known that. <coughs> let's say, let's go to the 15th of next month. You want to send me your name and phone number because I always pull a name out of the box on, on a video and I call you on the video. So I'll need a name and a phone number. Now, you send these to my email. Otherwise, if you put them in the box below, everybody's going to see your phone number. If you send it to my email, I'm the only one that can see this. You title it Spring Compressor because I get hundreds of emails a week. I get close to a hundred a day. So title this spring compressor so I can pluck them out and get them on the list without having to go through and read all of my emails. Just send me your name and phone number and title it spring compressor and that's all you need to do. You'll be on the list and the 15th of next month 
we're going to do a video and pull out a name and give you a call. And that's, that's all you got to do. And Rodney, I guess if, <laughs> if you want to enter, you just go right ahead because, hey, this was your ID in the first place. That, again, was Rodney, a good friend of mine from Ireland. And, you know, the only bad part about doing this is all the people I meet, and I say meet, uh, a lot of them send me pictures of them sitting on their snappers. Uh, I've got a bunch of them to hang up. This is by no means all of them. You can see a whole bunch of pictures up here on the wall. Um, I probably got that many more that I just got printed and they got to get them up there on the wall somewhere. And that gives me a way to meet you. I even had Jim from Australia sent me a picture of him and his wife standing on their balcony overlooking the ocean. That's the only way I'm ever going to see any of these countries. And uh, uh, Rodney sent me a picture of him and his snapper, uh, sent me a picture of his yard and his house, because I don't know what houses look like in Ireland. I don't even know what Ireland looks like, and I probably never will. And he sent me some pictures around the area. Uh, Jim did. He sent me a picture of a grocery store. And boy, I tell you, they don't look nothing like ours. And uh, the neighborhood watering hole, as he calls it, uh, it's just a good way to see how other people live. Uh, I know how I live, but... I know what my house looks like and my yard looks like, but um, some of these places I'll never see. I do travel around a little bit to meet some of my viewers. Uh, I drove down to Kentucky and seen Homer and his lovely wife, Nancy. His kids live right next door. Um, awesome, awesome family. And tell you that it, the area they live in Kentucky up on the mountain they have a view that's just it's just awesome and I appreciated going down there and meeting him that was two or three years ago and if I had the time and the money I would drive around and meet a lot more <laughs> of my viewers than I have um, so that's about it don't forget to register. I want to give this away to somebody. In fact, I have two of them. To <laughs> I have two of them to give away. So if you register and don't win the first time, you may win the other one. So please subscribe. Uh, I've got this little app on my phone now. The girl at the shop, she, she keeps up on all this stuff for me and keeps me informed I guess and this little app tells me that I have over 10,000 subscribers which is awesome but this little app tells me that all the people that watch and use my YouTube channel to repair their machines or repair anything and save them money only 18.3% of my viewers are actually subscribers. 81.7% don't subscribe. And it's free. Please subscribe. Someday, I mean, I get a lot of viewers saying, hey, how can I support your station? I want to donate some money. All you got to do is subscribe. If I get enough subscribers, Google will pay me through the commercials that are on my channel. That'll probably be a ways down the road because 10,000 subscribers sound like a lot, but they don't do much as far as Google's con concerned, I guess. So please subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. If you want to be notified every time I put a video out, after you subscribe, there's a little bell notification bell you touch that parentheses will show up 
and every time I put on a video you will be notified immediately and it'll be there ready for you to watch and I know some guys have because after that video goes online within two minutes I'll have four or five views and that's the guys that are subscribed and that have that bell pushed it's really for your convenience as much as it is for mine so until next time work safe have fun and I'll talk to you soon so long <laughs>